Hi, welcome back. This is Eric. We're going to continue on talking about traffic from joint venture affiliates. This is part two. And so we're going to talk about how to get these people to promote for you. And I want to tell you, first of all, back in 2009, that was the first year that I realized that joint venture affiliates was a million dollar game if you do it right. I mean, I'm talking about generating a million dollars if you do it right. And I mean, heck, even if you did half right, <laughs> you could still do a million dollars. What I mean by that is, you know, I'm saying if you if you do the JV affiliates right, you can generate a million dollars. And now I'm saying if you did it half right, you're only 50% doing it right, you can make a million dollars. And even if you do a quarter, 25% right, you can make a million dollars. And maybe even 10% is all that's required to make a million dollars. The fact of the matter is most people don't even do 10% of this right or even try. So in 2009, I did over $600,000 in revenue just that year alone, just from joint venture affiliates. That doesn't count anything else. That was the money that was generated just from affiliates promoting for me. So I might have had you know, 100, 200, 300 people promote for me that year to generate $600,000. $600, However... It's the whole the old 80-20 principle, right? Only about 9 to 11 of the joint venture affiliates represented most of that $600,000 that was generated. So in other words, I had tons of affiliates promote for me that year, but they may have generated one sell, two sell, or no sales at all. Okay, they drove traffic, so they represented affiliates. You know, maybe one person sent 50 clicks, or one person sent... 10 clicks or one person sent one click or someone sent a thousand clicks but they didn't make any sales but the 9 to 11 people that generated lots of sales represented about 80 percent of that six six hundred thousand dollar income does that make sense so of those 9 to 11 people that generated the six hundred thousand dollars i knew every single one of them they were my friends in the business I knew that. I, mean, I wouldn't say they were best friends, but they were friends of mine, you know, people that I had built up relationships with. So that says a whole lot there. So in 2010, a year later, we took a company from next to nothing to a million dollar income in just 12 months. And again, it was the 90-10 rule. Most of that money of that million dollars came from joint venture affiliates. Joint venture affiliates bankrolled the company to pay traffic. So um, 2010, 2011, 2012, we were doing a bunch of a joint venture affiliates to promote, to generate the revenue to, to make this a million dollar company. However, the joint venture affiliates created the, the success, the traffic, the sales, the income to bankroll doing paid traffic, solo ads, pay-per-click, banner ads, and, you know, and so on and so forth. So, this is a great way to get your business started, get it rolling, get it making you money, is to start out by getting joint venture affiliates to help generate the bankroll, the money, so you can turn around and use some of that money towards um, buying paid traffic so you can diversify your traffic. So let's talk about the steps. And like I already said on the previous training, you need a sales funnel set up that's functional, that converts well, that's really, really good. By sales funnel, I mean a squeeze page, sales letter, one-time offer, upsells, back-end sales, right? You need a whole sales funnel, uh, upsells, and then and down sales. And you need an affiliate program attached to that. So like iDev Affiliate, One Shopping Cart, NannyCast, Infusionsoft. Uh, the list goes on. So you need an affiliate, a ClickBank, you need an affiliate program attached to your sales funnel so affiliates can get paid commissions on all of those upsells and downsells and back-end offers. You need a high-ticket offer too, um, I recommend. And then you need an affiliate sign-up recruitment page. So you need a JV page that's dedicated to selling the affiliates on opting into your affiliate list. So you have your own a Weber list of nothing but just affiliates or your own get response list or infusion soft lifts list of just affiliates and you build up a list of affiliates to get them to sign up and then inside once they sign up or on that page you sell them on the commissions and the numbers and the testimonials and uh, the upsells and why this is good and the metrics and the earnings per click and yada 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 and then also next you want to provide them with swipe emails which are just their emails that they can just copy and paste and tweak a little bit and send out to their list to promote your offer. You provide them with their affiliate links, uh, affiliate tools like banners and whatnot, uh, contests maybe where you're going to give away um, really cool prizes, testimonials, 
of people that have promoted before uh, and testimonials of customers that love the product programs uh, proof factors you could give them comp access you know just uh, free access to your offers uh, so they could check it out some people will want to review it before they promote it uh, have some statistics and numbers you know your earnings per click your conversion rates and average sell and all that stuff buzz you know what kind of buzz you could create with viral stuff and and, and contests and traffic and all that uh, publicity maybe even a, a interviews maybe even do a recip plan a reciprocation plan where you promote back to them for promoting for you and you can set them up on a schedule or uh, you know any of that kind of stuff so the next what you need is you need a plan a plan that you're gonna stick to and stick to and stick to no matter what okay you need a plan now you could tweak your plan but you need the the foundation of a plan that you're gonna stick to no matter what like you have to go all the way through to the end with your plan the last 25 percent of any plan is the hardest to complete and also the first 25 percent is the hardest to complete so once you get going you know the hard the, the hard part is getting started and then once you get going it's easy or easier and then the last 25 or 15 percent is super hard to complete it that's just human nature so make sure you stick to it all the way to the end now the first question to answer is this how are you going to approach joint venture affiliates and what leverage do you have write that down if you're taking notes the first question is how are you going to approach joint venture affiliates and what leverage do you have so if you're writing it down how am I going to approach joint venture affiliates and what leverage do I have? Okay, so how are you going to go about it and what leverage do you have to bring to the table? So here's some types of leverage. You know, what do you bring to the table? What's in it for me? What's in it for me is what everyone thinks no matter how they act or what they say. They want to know what you are going to do for them. What's in it for them? Well, you may think, well, what's in it for them is money. You promote my product, you make money, commissions. Usually that's not good enough. There's got to be more than that because, frankly, they may not believe you. They may not know you. They may not trust you. Okay, so what's in it for them beyond just getting paid commissions, right? So do you have a list where you can reciprocate and promote for them an email subscriber list? Do you have a name or a brand in the marketplace? If you do, then they trust you more because they realize they may have heard of you or they realize you're not going to want to damage your brand and reputation that you've built up. So a name or brand adds to the leverage to get people to promote for you. Do you have just a super great product? Now, this, this little bullet point here, everyone thinks they have a really great product. That's not necessarily true. Having a really great product means that like people are just loving it. You're getting testimonials all over the place. It's a breakthrough product, right? Well, if you have one of those, then that's leverage. That's super big leverage, okay? Most people have average to below average products. Proof factors, great offer. I mean, do you have a bunch of proof factors on your uh, on your, 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 your affiliate recruitment page like a lot of other people that have promoted for this already? So maybe you don't have a name or a brand, and maybe you don't have a list, and maybe you don't have a super great, awesome product, but you have a, other people who have promoted for you who have – a big name, big list, and maybe great products. So in other words, if you have three gurus in your marketplace who promoted for you and you have that shown on your affiliate recruitment page, then others are more likely to promote for you because they'll look at it like, well, if these big dogs promoted for you, then, you know, I should promote for you too because they did it. So it must, you know, those are smart people. So maybe they, I mean, they're gurus by God. So if they promoted, then it should be good enough for me to promote too. So that helps as well. Uh, do you have a great offer? You know, that's another thing. If your sales video or your sales page or the graphics and all that look really great, and it's just a really great offer, like it's just a really sexy, attractive offer that people want, then that could help. Do you have awesome numbers? I mean, numbers, stats can sell. Now, well, this comes with a, a bit of a caveat too because people lie about their numbers and statistics just to get you to promote. And we all know that. Everyone exaggerates. In fact, there's a tradition in the internet marketing market, which is anyone that tells you a number, go ahead and cut it in half. So if someone says, 
yeah, we're converting at 9%. Eh, cut it in half. That means they're probably converting at 4%. Or someone's like, yeah, we're getting EPCs, earnings per click, at $8. You know, yeah, right. It's probably more like three, 2 or $3, right? So they, they um, which is still good, but they, they're... They, they amplify it. They exaggerate. So um, everyone kind of has that. So numbers and statistics aren't necessarily going to do it just by themselves. You, you probably need something else to go along with it. Uh, dig deeper on leverage. I mean, do you have a big following, social media following crowd? Are you good at copywriting or conversions or graphic art or programming? Something that you can bring to the table and provide for someone else. Traffic skills. I mean, if you're really good at pay-per-click or you're known for traffic or you're known, you know, you're really good at banner buys or media buys or whatever, then that could be a form of leverage because everyone wants traffic. Um, do you go to events? Do you conduct events? Do you have your own events? Do you have a lot of contacts, people that you know? If so, that gives you leverage. People will treat you with respect and they'll like you if they think you're somebody that has a bunch of contacts and knows everybody. If you're a networker and connector. Uh, do you do speaking engagements? Do you have people speak on your behalf? Do you have events where people come and speak? All that stuff adds to your visibility, credibility, and likelihood that people will promote for you. What do you have that makes you beyond all the wannabes out there who bring nothing to the table? Is what we're saying in a nutshell. Okay, what you need is leverage because everyone and their grandmother out there is going to ask people to promote for them. But if you rise above the noise and you stand out above the wannabes out there, then people will pay attention and they'll promote for you and make you a ton of money. But the way to do it is to stand out. And the way to stand out is to have leverage like some of the things I've mentioned already with well, the bullet points above is if you have something that you bring to the table that's more than just your words, then you're going to be a lot more likely to get people to promote for you. So if you got a list that you can reciprocate, if you have contacts, if you're visible, if you have name in the marketplace, if you could reciprocate traffic, all those kinds of things are going to increase your likelihood to get people to promote for you. Okay, now if you're just a nobody, then you're going to need to create and craft some leverage so you could get some of this. So if no one knows you, and then they're not going to trust you very easily. And so you're going to need to bring something to the table to make yourself stand out above and beyond most of the people in the market who are wannabes and want people to promote for them anyway. Got it? So better yet, what leverage can you craft? What leverage can you create? What leverage can you generate? What leverage can you invent? And then bring that leverage to the table when you ask people, to promote for you. So can you add some of the things like, you know, copywriting skills or add a list or add traffic or add visibility or add events or add something to your existing leverage or just craft and create leverage? <clears throat> Let's talk about parasite leverage, okay? It's made that word up kind of, but we're talking about borrowing leverage here. Now, this is extremely powerful, okay? Now, I call this finishing finishing in second place if you imagine a race like a car race for example so you're speeding around the track and you you know you're gonna finish in second place in order to have a first place business is kind of the way i say it so i had a membership program this is a true story let me tell you this story about myself but i had this membership program it was a coaching program and i sold about 500 spots of this membership all by myself People loved it. You know, the customers that were inside this membership coaching program absolutely loved it. I had testimonials out my ears. Okay, it was just a great program, but I ran out of reach because I didn't know very many people. I wasn't going to a lot of events. I wasn't trying to build relationships, nothing like that. I pretty much sold these 500 spots on my own to my own list or through paid traffic. And then I just kind of ran out of reach and got to a point where I was getting a little bit frustrated and I thought I needed a much, much bigger reach to go big time, right? Because I wanted to turn this into a million dollar income. And so I reached a, I guess, a point where I was like, man, I don't know if I could, you know, get to that point by myself. It'd be a lot easier if I got some help. So this is what I did. I created a list of five of the top marketers in the marketplace to approach at that time. That was, this was years ago to partner with me. OK, so I said to the first guy on my list, the very first guy I went to, I said, hey, man, check it out. I'll do all the work. You don't have to barely lift a finger. All I need you to do is one thing. 
promote or two things promote to your own list and also recruit affiliates to promote this program as well that's it i'll do all the rest use your brand and name and your status and credibility in the marketplace you could be the face of this program and take all the credit i don't even want the credit i'll run the rest of the entire business the customer service everything from a to z all you have to do is promote and i'll give you a solid cut of this business all the income of this business the very first guy i asked who was the top guy on my list and one of the top guys in the entire market said yes he would do it so virtually overnight we went and i was pretty much a nobody back then so virtually overnight we went from 500 customers to over 2,500 customers, and it became a million dollar business virtually overnight because it was a great match, a really great program with great content, cough, cough, and you know, really good customer support, everything. It was just a great program. All it needed was someone to take it big time, and he did that. So it was a great match. It worked for me, and it worked for him. By the way, That was the second time I had done that same technique. The first time I reached out to a different marketer and we together created a $30,000 per month business doing the exact same thing. I basically said the same thing. All I need you to do is promote and get other people to promote. I'll take care of the rest and you'll get a cut. He gladly did it. We turned it into a $30,000 per month business. So I've taught this technique, you know, finishing in second place to have a first place income to other people, including one-on-one coaching clients of mine who I've helped guide through this, and it's worked for them too. So it works. In fact, now people, you know, come to me and they use the same technique on me, including my one-on-one clients. They're like, hey, Eric, I got this little proposition for you. And I'm like, that's funny. I think I remember teaching you that proposition. We just laugh. So what do you bring to the table is the bottom line here. Okay. In business, this is it right here. What do you bring to the table? Okay. And if you bring something of value to the table that matches something that someone else needs, then you got to match. And that's a great opportunity to do a JV partnership where you can make yourself a lot of money. So if you yourself can't go out and get joint venture affiliates to promote for you, maybe you should consider partnering with someone who can. Okay, and then get them to do that work while you do the rest of the work. And they're out there bringing in cash and money and and building relationships, which makes it easier for you. Or perhaps you're the person that uh, would rather do this and then get someone else to handle everything else. It just depends. Everyone's different. You may be afraid to do this or not afraid, but don't want to do this, don't like to do this, and you want to get someone else to do it. Or maybe you are the one that wants to do this and get, get someone else to handle the customer service and everything else, and you just go out there and recruit affiliates. Who knows? It just depends on what is the strength for you. So once you have that figured out, then keep adding to your leverage power. You know, whatever you have figured out that you have to bring to the table right now, then just keep adding more leverage to your arsenal of leverage power. If you don't have any leverage right now, then you best go get some. Okay, add a list. Add a brand, add contacts, start building relationships, add proof factors, add numbers, add events and masterminds, add buzz, become more visible in your marketplace, take more more bold action, just put yourself out there, become more visible. It's all connected. Everything here is connected, but build your leverage up higher and higher and higher. And once you have plenty of leverage to bring to the table, making money becomes a breeze. I mean, it becomes a snap to make money when you have leverage that you bring to the table because it's joint venture affiliates that has made me the most money I've ever made in my life. Plus, everyone that I know who has generated over a million dollars online pretty much did it through joint venture affiliates too. Now, some did it with mostly traffic, paid traffic, I mean, and not joint venture affiliates, but every single person I know who has done over a million dollars online generated most of their revenue through either A, joint venture affiliates promoting for them, or B, paid traffic, or both. Okay, they didn't do it from all the other ways. So these are the ways that make the most money. And later on, we're going to talk about paid traffic. But right now, this is by far the number one way of making money that I've ever seen in the the online world is going to get in joint venture affiliates to promote for you. Now, I want you to know that thousands of people have lists now. I mean, thousands of people have lists now. 
back when I first started, I mean, it was a handful of people that had a list of subscribers. Now, everyone in the grandmother has a list of 2,000, 5,000, 20,000 people on their list. So it's much different times now. And there's so many, so many people that have lists that it's a lot easier to go out there and get them to promote for you. Now, that's not the case in every single niche, I don't think. But it's certainly the case in a lot of the bigger niches out there. So there are thousands and thousands of people and businesses that have email subscriber lists now. All you need is about 10 to 30 small guys or a few big guys or gals to promote for you, and it's game over. So no, even the big guys out there who act all big and talk a big game don't necessarily have a good responsive list. I found that out the hard way. You get all excited about someone who has a branded name to promote for you, and then they tell you that they just really don't have a very good list right now, and that's you know, I understand because I've been in this business so long. My list has gone up and down, up and down. Sometimes it's converting like crazy and I'm getting tons of sales. And other times it's just I can't. It's like pulling teeth to get a bunch of clicks. So I understand the people in the marketplace. It's all about timing. So for you as someone who's recruiting affiliates, it's about timing too. So just because someone doesn't drive a ton of traffic for you doesn't mean they won't drive a ton of traffic for you later. So don't burn any bridges. Be cool. Be cool with all these people. Be nice. Be generous. Be gracious. Be grateful. And help these people. And they'll help you. And don't worry about it. So here's the plan I recommend. The steps for the plan. Craft a joint venture affiliate recruitment email. Okay? This is the way you go out and reach people. So fill up a spreadsheet, like an Excel spreadsheet, with 100 names. People's names in your market, right? So you're going to have to do some research. You can pay someone to do some research for you. But you need 100 names of people that have lists or seem like they have lists in your marketplace. And then find their email addresses. Or if you can't find their email address, put on the spreadsheet their Facebook name or their help desk ticket link or whatever you can find to reach them. If there's people in your niche that you just cannot reach no matter what, then just don't worry about it. They're <laughs> they're not going to be someone to do business with anyway, most likely. But most people who are movers and shakers and players are going to have ways to get in contact with them or at least get in contact with a staff member that works with them. So you get 100 names in your niche or a crossover niche, and they hit each and every one of those 100 people with a direct personal email or a private message or a Skype private message or a Facebook private message or through a help desk ticket or somehow smoke signals reach each and every one of those hundred people. This is your plan. A hundred direct contacts. Some are going to completely ignore you and never respond to you. Some will even bite back. Those are idiots. But what they'll do is they'll ridicule you for reaching out to them. Don't worry about it. They don't understand yet. <laughs> Likely they're not making a ton of money, but they have this big head, this big significant head because they have a brand or they have a blog that people read. But when it comes down to it, they're not playing the affiliate game. If they were, they wouldn't bite back. Just scratch them off your list. I've gotten this too. I have one guy that was like ripping me because I asked him to promote. And of course, I just deleted him. Okay, so in other words... I responded like this. Okay, fine. You know, I understand you don't play the affiliate game. So I'll take you off my list of successful people. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> it's just some people are just idiots. Uh, and, and also a lot of people hide behind the internet too. You know, they just feel like the big giant internet's out there. They could be rude and stuff like that. Those same people, you get them in a conference room or standing next to them and they cower. You know, they just act like they're all badass. They're really not. You know, most people are just normal. But they act like they're these big hot shots on the internet. It's called significance. A lot of people just want significance. Just ignore them. Some people are going to give you excuses. Now that one's an important important one. This is something that I learned a few years ago that really made a big difference. But when you recruit affiliates, they, they're quick to give you excuses. But if you treat those excuses like objections, then that can make a significant difference. Because what do you do when someone gives you an objection in sales? You overcome that objection, right? And then close them again. So before I learned this, if someone gave me an excuse, I just said, oh, okay, thank you. And just moved on, right? Sorry. Sorry to bother you. Uh, bye. Maybe next time. You know, that's crap. So when I learned, you know what? This is an objection. I should know better. I'm in sales. 
But for some reason, we treat our peers differently than we do our customers. But our peers who are ask, we're asking to promote for us, we don't want to make them mad, right? We don't want to step on their toes or create any kind of friction for some reason because they're equals or perceived equals. But what I learned is, you know what? <laughs> they're just giving you objections. They're just excuses to overcome the objections. So when someone says, oh, I can't promote right now. I'm doing my own launch. Don't be like, okay, thank you. No, no, no. You say, well, when can you promote? When your launch, when is your launch done? I'll put you on the schedule then, Snapperhead. And if they're like, no, no, my whole month's booked up. Don't be like, okay, your whole month's booked up. See ya. No, no, no. You're like, well, what about next month? Are you booked the rest of the your life? You know, be a little sarcastic because sometimes you got to do that to overcome the objections. No, I'm not telling you to be sarcastic. You can be however you want to be. I'm sarcastic a little bit when I start getting excuses. So just overcome the excuses. I can't promote right now. I, um, you know, I, uh, uh, my list isn't, isn't very good. Or I've hit my list too hard. I need to rest it. Okay, I understand. Check with me later. No, no, no. Well, how long are you going to rest your list? Are you going out of business? Are you going to give it a couple of weeks? Can you promote on, you know, next month on the 15th? I'll put you down on my calendar. Let me know, yes or no. So you just keep overcoming the objections until they either say yes or they say no, I'm not going to promote or they just stop responding. Now, that's being a little bit more aggressive, which we'll talk about in a second. Now, some will want more information and be positive. These are the people that I like, right? These are the ones we all like. Those are usually the ones that are active, movers and shakers, actively trying to grow their list, actively trying to make money, actively trying to grow their business. These are the ones you want to do business with anyway. Okay? So... You got to kind of sift through the other people to get to this point where you find these people to do business with. And I'm telling you, all you need is about 10 to 30 of these people and your whole entire life will change. Is it worth it to go through the excuses? Is it worth it to go to a, through a couple of people being rude like the bite back idiots? Is it worth it to have people ignore you? To find 10 to 30 people that can change your entire life? Yes. This is why it's so beneficial. You might go through five people and they'll find one person that is a mover and shaker. Maybe you have to go through 10 to 15 people before you find one person who's cool, who's nice, who's positive, and is actively wanting to do business. You may have to go through 20 people to find one person who's cool, active, a mover and shaker, positive, and ready to do business. Is it worth it? It's worth it because it can change your life. And you start out by reaching 100 people, a plan, and just do it. If you get 10 or more to say yes, you're in business, and the game is about to get real good for you. So personal. Email subject line, this is the way I like to do it. I think, I think I actually invented this. Personal in brackets like that or parentheses, hey, Eric, I got a question. So if you were promoting, if you're asking me, maybe your subject title to your email to me would be like that. Personal, hey, Eric, I got a question, dot, 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 the ellipsis there. Hey, Eric, how's it going? This is Stan Smith or whatever your name is, bugging you <laughs> with a happy face. I have the sales funnel. That is doing very well for me, conversions-wise. And I wanted to give you an offer you cannot refuse. Happy face. Here's what I am proposing to get to the point. I'll pay you right away this week. And I'll also give you 100% commissions on the front end, 75% on the upsell, number one, and 75% commissions on the upsell, number two, and 50% upsell on, I mean, commissions on upsell, number three. I'm basically giving you the farm and kitchen sink here because I want to expand my reach and strike a cool JV relationship with you. I'm a big fan. So we can make big money together well into the future. Let me know if you are interested and I'll take great care of you indeed. Here's my Skype ID, my cell phone number, my best email address. I'll set up access for you here, name, password. And I'll, I could comp you full access if you want to check it out. The system rocks, man, and it works like a charm. By the way, these people are all interested in whatever, whatever it is, excuse me, you're teaching too. 
So use that as a leverage point. They want to learn new ways of making money or learn what you're doing as well. Now, one other thing you could add to this is whatever other leverage point you have. I'll gladly reciprocate for you. I'll reciprocate. I'll send more traffic than you sent me or whatever you want to do to get them to promote. Do it. And then start selling, okay? Stage one, let me just talk about this for a second. This is a little s tangent here. But I want to explain something to you. Because likely, you know, some of the people that would watch this video are going to think like this. So let me just kind of destroy this for a second. There's different stages of business. And stage one is going from zero to a million dollars per year of income, right? Now, if you're in business and you're doing over a million dollars, then... Well, stage one doesn't apply to you. You're in stage two or three. But most people fall into stage one where they're trying to go from zero to, you know, however much money you, you want to make. 200 grand, 300 grand, 100 grand, whatever is your goal. I'm here to tell you, you can do a million dollars. I don't care who you are. You may not think so, but you can. A million dollars is not what it used to be. <laughs> it's not a ton of money like it used to be. And just about anyone that goes into business for themselves should easily be able to reach a million dollars if they just apply themselves. So stage one is zero to a million dollars in sales. I mean, stage one is zero to a million dollars. And the key to get from zero to a million dollars is sales. I don't care what any of the so-called gurus out there say or teach. I don't care what the so-called best-selling New York Times books on business say. It's sales. I don't care if you are offended by sales. I don't care if you think you're too good for sales. I don't care who you are, where you're from, what kind of degrees or credentials you have. I don't care. If you want to go from zero to a million dollars, you're going to do it through sales marketing and business equals a lot of people think this marketing and business equals well you get business cards you set up an llc or an incorporation you get product creation and you got to focus on the packaging and the surveys and the tagline and the logo and the website and the right kind of paper clips and brochures and your guru picture and the best looking videos and animation videos and graphics and yada 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 no 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 that's not marketing and business that's all the side junk that doesn't amount to nothing here's what marketing and business is sales Period. 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 Marketing and business is sales. If you hate that word, selling. If you hate the word, sales. If you hate the word, salesperson, then it's going to be very difficult to go to a million dollars. You or your partner or someone in your firm better be awesome at getting sales. Okay? 10% more aggressive than you're used to being. If you are 10% more aggressive than you are used to being, you'll get 200% better results than you're used to getting. So turn up the volume. Get 10% more aggressive across the board on everything that you do in business, and you'll start making money. You'll start getting results. You'll start entering a world that most people never see. Get 10% more aggressive. It means you're a mover. It means you're a shaker. It means you're ambitious. It means it knows you know what you want. It means you have a plan. It means you're going somewhere. It means that people are going to be attracted to you, to work with you, to do business with you, to give you money. So be 10% more aggressive than most of the world is, which is average. Most people are just average. They're people pleasers. They don't want to push too much. They don't want to overcome objections. They don't want to sell. They don't want to ask for the sell. They don't want to ask for anything, period. Like with little kids, we ask all the time, mommy, daddy, can I have this? Can I do this? Can I have this? Can I do this? Can I have this? Can I do this? And the parents get frustrated like, ah, oh, you're always asking me, asking me all these questions, asking me for all these things. And then when we become adults, we don't ask for anything. I mean, we could be like dying and we're like, Ugh, I'm starving. I wish I had a glass of water. And then you're standing in front of a restaurant and you're like, I don't have any money. I'll just starve to death. <laughs> go ask for something, right? Ask for a drink of water or go to something. So be 10% more aggressive. And then go hit those 100 people no matter what. If that's your plan, no matter what. The world could be ending and tidal waves could be destroying the world. You hit your 100 people no matter what. Let the world end. You need to get that 100 people hit. No matter what, 
finish. Don't hit 75 people, hit 100. Don't hit 95 people, hit 100. Don't hit 15 people and then quit, hit 100. Whoops, let's go back a second. You could be having your right foot sawed off, right? You're at the hospital and they're sawing your foot off. Just cutting that sucker off. You still hit the 100 people no matter what. You tell the doctor, wait a second, I need to get on my laptop. I need to hit about 15 more people to complete my 100. And then you can go ahead and proceed and saw off the rest of my foot, doc. Hit the 100 people no matter what and get 10% more aggressive. Proof generates proof. This is what you would say. Hey, Eric, I'd like to do the same for you that I did with Mike, John, and Frank or whoever, right? Three, list three people, and maybe you would use their last names, of course. And if I'm like, oh, I know who those people are, or I know who one of those people are, it's going to make a difference in me promoting for you. So basically, you're using social proof on me. And this is a, a saying right here that I've used to build a million-dollar business. It was an offline business, and this is what we did. It was with small businesses. We'd walk into a business and say, hey, Mr. Business Owner, I'd like to do the same for you that we did with Joe's uh, restaurant and Mike's, uh, you know, uh, Carpet cleaning business and, and Molly's bank. Can we do the same for you that we've done for them? And then the business owner would be like, what'd you do for them? Oh, it sounds good. If you did it for them, you can do it for me. Here's what they did. So this is going on with what you would say to somebody. You'd say, hey, so-and-so, I'd like to do the same for you that I did with blank, blank, and blank. Here's what they did. Blank, blank, and blank. So John did $50,000, Susan did $22,000, and Mary did $8,000. 10 affiliates lead to 1,000 affiliates. So if you get 10 people to promote for you, and at the very bottom of your site it says affiliates, if you get people to, if you promote, if you get 10 people to promote for you, it'll turn into 1,000 affiliates on your list. Now out of those 1,000 people, like I told you at the very beginning of this presentation, they're not all going to send you a ton of business. Some of them aren't going to do anything. They're just signing up to your list to play pretend affiliate or something. But some of them will. And the more, if it's the 80-20 rule, 20% of those 1,000 people will send you more traffic. And then guess what? It compounds from there. This is how you get this game started, my friend. So if you get 10 affiliates... The game started. It starts compounding, and as long as you just keep working, it'll keep growing and keep getting better and better and better, making more and more money. Snowball effect. If you got a hundred affiliates, it leads to ten thousand affiliates. Actually, that should be a thousand. If you have a thousand affiliates, it leads to ten thousand affiliates. So market to affiliates. The key is follow up. Follow up with them. Don't just send them one email and they call it a year. Follow up with them. Follow up with them. Hey. Following up to this email I sent you, Snapperhead. Did you get it? Can you promote for me? I haven't heard back. Knock, knock. Hello, McFly. Anyone home? Hey, I'm following up again. This is my second follow-up. You there? Everything okay? You still in business? <laughs> okay, guess you're out of business or not interested in working with others. Um, you know, that's optional. So however sar sarcastic you decide to get, I want to tell you something. There was a time, and I've got a pretty good name in my marketplace. You know, I got a good reputation, pretty good name. Lots of people know who I am in the marketplace. And I was very active in the marketplace at this one particular time, and I couldn't get anyone to promote for me. And I'm asking them, hey, can you promote? And everyone's giving me excuses. This is when I learned to overcome the excuses, by the way. But I finally just got mad. I can't help it. I'm a human being. I got mad. I'm like, what the hell? I promoted for this guy. He's not promoting back for me. I asked this guy to promote. He's ignoring me. I asked this guy to promote. He's giving me a stupid excuse. I got that lady to promote for me, and she won't promote back, and she's ignoring me. I finally, one day, I was just like, what the heck? I'm pissed off. So I started letting my emotions out, and I started responding to these people. I remember one guy sent an email to him. He was giving me all these crazy like stipulations in order to promote. In order to promote, you need to take my offer and put it in your back end. You need to pay me a minimum of 75%. You need to allow me to send to the, straight to the sales letter and not squeeze it. You need to do and all these stipulations, right? So it started with him. And not you know nothing against him. It's just that he caught me in a bad time because I was already mad. And then I get this email. So I responded back, you know what? 
don't promote. <laughs> I don't need you. You could just piss off, okay? I don't need you to promote for me, and I don't need to agree to your stipulations. You either want to do business or you don't want to do business. Either respond to me that you want to promote and do business or just go away. And, of course, he responded, man, you don't have to get all mad. And he ended up promoting. And then, you know, I just started responding to others. You know what? You can just go, you know, F yourself. And you can do the, you can need to piss off. And I was just, like, responding to everyone, like, all mad. And I actually thought in my head, I'm not going to recruit affiliates anymore. I'm just going to do paid traffic. And it was amazing how everyone started saying yes, that they would promote. And I was like, wow, maybe all it took was for me to get upset. You know, these people, and then they started responding favorably to promote. And then that business did a hundred thousand over a hundred thousand dollars in the next four or five days. Seriously, it went on to do like a few hundred thousand dollars. And, and in those first few days, I couldn't get anyone to promote. And then when I started getting mad, everyone started promoting. It's amazing. And I don't know why that's the case, but it happened. So, what I've learned since then is I don't take no or an excuse for an answer. Okay, I say, no, hey, you need to promote. And if I piss them off, so what? They're not doing business with me anyway. Anyway, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. You could play Mr. Nice Guy or Mrs. Nice Gal and just be fluffy sweet with all this too. And, and that's fine. You can work like that too. Me, I get a little aggressive, but that's just who I am. And it, and it works for me. I'm a sales guy. I'm going to do it. I'm going to sell people. I'm going to overcome objections. Everyone's different. I'm just giving you my point of view, my impression of what I have done to generate millions of dollars online through joint venture affiliates. JV brokers, affiliate managers. This is a hard game to go hire people to be a JV broker for you or affiliate manager. You really got to find a dynamic person who's generous, who uh, really wants to work with you and see you succeed, which are rare, hard to find people like that. But especially starting out, this is a hard game. Um, they're going to quickly think, hmm, I just helped him make $50,000. Why don't I just do this on my own for my own products? You know, that's very easy. If they're promoting for you, and they're recruiting people to promote your product, and all of a sudden they see you make fifty grand or hundred grand or two hundred fifty grand, and they went and recruited these affiliates to promote for you. It doesn't take that JV broker long to realize that all he or she needs is their own product, and they can go do that for themselves too, which is true. They can. So some JV brokers are just glorified affiliates too out there. In other words, they get like a second tier 10% override to go send an email out to their list of affiliates. So they got a big old list of affiliates, 10,000, 20,000 people on their list, and they get you to sign a deal with them that they become your JV broker. But all they really do is go out there and send a broadcast email or two or three to that big list to get them to go promote for you. That's still very valuable. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying that they're not, they don't really try too hard beyond that to uh, get you affiliates. And they get a 10% override. They make pretty good money. So it all breaks down to the maybe they make five grand an email you know, or something like that. They have their metrics. So just keep this in mind if you're looking to get other people to do this for you. I say... One of the best ways to do this is to make a JV broker or affiliate manager out of scratch. <laughs> like find somebody and make them an affiliate manager or a JV broker. Like a hired person and train them how to do it. Or it's a colleague or somebody. You, together you guys come up with a plan. A salesperson, networking type person, personality are usually the good type of people to get into this role. Who would be like a JV broker because they like people. They like networking with people. They like striking new relationships. They like using their personality, their salespeople or their you know, personality people, their networkers and connectors and stuff like that. That Those are the kind of people you really want to grab if you can. Have that person spend 100% of their time recruiting, following up, doing the admin, taking care of the joint venture affiliates, striking deals, going to events, whatever. That's their job. That's their that's their their um, their gig when it comes to their responsibility which, when it comes to the partnership. A list of affiliates. Once you have a list of affiliates, you can keep up with them. You can follow up with them. You can promote to them. You can even promote other affiliate opportunities to them and take a cut like the other person I was just saying got a 10% override, second tier. But I ignore those emails myself. When I get those emails from people, on their I'm on their affiliate list and they're just broadcasting out to their entire list trying to get everyone to promote with this big, swells, well swooping, huge email that went out to 10,000 people. I'm just like, delete. Unless I see personal, someone personally trying to recruit me to promote for them, I just delete those emails. 
So I don't know if everyone else does that too, but it's probably not going to be as effective to do um, broadcast emails. I mean, if you got a list, go ahead and promote out to them, but I think you should probably directly ask people to promote for you. So nothing beats personal emails, phone calls, or Skype calls, or Skype instant messages, or Facebook instant messages, period. The broadcast emails, I don't think, work as well as just reaching out and asking people point blank to promote for you. It's a bit of sales, but what did I say? As far as going from zero to a million dollars, it requires sales. Again, you want to be visible. Step out into the market and get visible. You want to be visible. It's amazing what happens the more visible you get. You also get all the people coming out of the woodworks from the past, too, once you've been in this business for a while. It's, it's amazing. Like, the more visible you get, the more – it's like you're, you know that game? Like, you go to, like, the game room, you know, your kid. Okay, by yourself. You go to the game room and you're, like, playing games. There's that one game that you have, like, a hammer or something, and there's these little, like – chipmunks or something that pop their head up and you, you you like whack or moles you whack a mole right so you got the little hammer and you there's like 10 holes right and you're waiting for the little mole this little chipmunk prairie dog thing to stick his head up and you're like whack and you hit it on top of the head then the next one sticks up and you're like whack and you hit it on top of the head and you try to and you get your points for hitting on whacking the moles right whack whack and you hit them as you come up. well it's like that in business too the more visible you get in your market and you stick your head up people are like whack <laughs> they try to whack you in your head right and then you pop your head up again and they're like whack and then they pop your head up again and they're like whack and then all of a sudden they stop whacking and then you're just visible Okay, but when you first start to try to become visible, especially if you haven't been visible for a while, like this is what's happened to me. I've gone periods of time with not being very visible. Then all of a sudden I start being visible. I'm on Facebook and I'm over here and I'm over there and I'm doing launches and I'm doing all these products and integration and all these deals with affiliates. And all. Uh, that's me sticking my head up. Right. And I'm poking my head up and then people come whack. Hey, man, what about this in the past? Whack. Hey, man, what about this? You know, you were coaching me two years ago. Whack. Hey, what about this? You know, four years ago, I bought this program. Whack. Hey, could you help me out here? You always said you'd give me a... It's just like it comes rushing to the to the point, right? So everyone wants something, you know, when you stick your head out there. And then after a little while, it just, you know, washes out and it's gone. And then at that point, you, you just can be visible all over the place. You don't have to worry about all these people trying to take your time. So our money or interest or opportunity, that's the point where the more visible you get, the more you have to turn away opportunity too, because opportunity comes flooding towards you, the more visible you become because you're top of mind. You're in front of the, the, them, the spotlights on you. So they're going to ask you, they're going to come to you. And then all of a sudden opportunity comes flooding. So visibility being visible has its pros and cons, but the cons are short lived. And then all of a sudden there's no cons and it's just positive and your whole life changes. You make a ton of money. So be visible. Try it. Just become more visible in your marketplace. Try to be everywhere. Try to flood the market with you. Rise above the noise. Be someone. Reach out there. Be above average. Don't be average like everyone else. Do what, do what the average people don't do in the market. Like in my market, people don't do webinars too often. They're scared to death to do webinars. But those that were doing webinars or have done webinars rise above the noise. And they're now out in front of the marketplace and they reap the rewards of being above average. Okay, so be above average. Throw yourself out there. Put yourself out there. Be visible. And then all these affiliates will be easy to recruit. Making money becomes easy across the board because it's all connected. Okay, be someone. Go to events. Go to masterminds. Go to workshops. Go to meetup meetings. Have webinars. Have teleseminars. Do chats. Mastermind with people. Reach out to people. Create dialogue with other people in your marketplace. Strike up relationships. Just reach out to people. Create more vibration in you and in your business and everything that you're doing and watch it all attract to you. Have you ever seen one of those, like in Texas here, we have these lights, right? That you, they're like zap lights. I don't even know what you call them, but they're like purple lights and you turn them on in the summertime when we have these big mosquitoes flying around everywhere and these bugs and stuff and the zapper like zaps bugs like bzz, bzz. And, and the bugs are attracted to that light, right? And then, so if you're outside on the back porch, you know, barbecue and drinking some beer or whatever you do, and you have this light, right? It's like, zzz, zzz. every once in a while you hear, uh, you hear a, uh, but a bug getting like, you know, electrocuted to death, getting an electric chair. So that light, that black light, whatever it's called, the zapper light for bugs, 
Well, you know what? You become like one of those zapper lights whenever you become visible and put yourself out there and throw your personality out there and start recruiting people to promote for you and start striking relationships and masterminds. You're like that light and all these bugs start flocking to you. Although you're not, you know, electrocuting them, but you are you have all these people been attracted to you where you become the hunted instead of the hunter and everything changes for you. Your whole business changes. And then you need to be aware that you're going to get flooded with opportunities. You don't have to turn opportunity away. That means you're doing things right. Okay? So you'll build relationships. Always remember that it's what's in it for me with everyone that you deal with. So always be, I like to be unconditional, um, unconditional to the point where I'm there to help people. So I don't, I don't even care if it turns out to be a joint venture or affiliate deal. I don't care if this person ever makes me any money or not. When I get around people, this is more of a spiritual thing for me, but I try to be present with them. I want to listen to them. I want to be there for them. I want to help them. I'm there for them, not without any regard for myself. And by doing that, I've been able to build up some really great relationships. I've been able to have a tremendous life and be able to have some really great things when it comes to business too happen. So I recommend you do the same thing. So many people out there is what's in it for me. So if I go to an event, it's it's all it's always all about the other people. They're always asking about what I could do for them. Hey Eric, can you do this for me? Hey Eric, can you do that for me? Hey Eric, I was wondering if you can take a picture with me. Hey Eric, I was wondering if you can you know do this. Can you do that? Maybe you'd be interested in this. Maybe you'd be interested in that. I was wondering if you can answer this question. And, and and it's like everyone's like me 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 me. And I'm all about you 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 when I go to an event or around other people. Help 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 other people. And it's amazing what kind of difference that makes. If you do that in an event where everyone's about me, 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 and you're being you, 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 you will become a a magnetic individual and everyone will be wanting to do business with you, work with you, talking great things about you. It'll spread and you'll be in the spotlight and it'll be easy to make money. Now, I know this isn't for everybody. What I'm talking about is very painful for some people. They have they don't want to be visible. They don't want to be in cells. It's not them. They want to be behind the scenes. They want to hide behind their computers and all that. Fine. Get someone who is willing to be visible. Get someone who's willing to be in sales. Get someone who's willing to be the spokesperson. Like Billy Mays here, find someone to be the face, to go out there and do this stuff if you don't want to be that person, okay? If you're going to be that person, then be that person. You can't have it both ways. You can't be like, I want to get all the credit, but I don't want to do all that stuff. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, do events and masterminds and webinars and all that. I'm too shy and nervous to do that. But I want the credibility. I want the. No, 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 no. You got to build up your confidence and get out there and do that if you want the credibility. If not, be the person behind the scenes and be the conductor, the masterminder, the puppeteer. That's puppet master that's making everyone else do what you need them to do you're the conductor like in an orchestra conducting everyone that needs to create the sales copy create the product create the traffic recruit the affiliates handle the customer service and just be that person behind the scenes or something whatever it needs to be i'm here to tell you that maybe being more visible can make you a ton of money jv promoters hey how Hey, you did well promoting, John. I tell you what, if you can hit it a couple of more days, I'll bump your commissions to blank. So instead of 50%, I'll bump them to 60%. Or instead of 50%, I'll bump them to 75%. Instead of 75%, I'm bumping to 85%. And what I'm saying here is if someone promotes for you, get them to keep promoting. One promotion to their list is meaningless compared to hitting it four or five times. It makes a tremendous difference because their list is... If their list continues to keep seeing the same email day after day, they're like, I better pay attention to this. This is a big deal. He keeps talking about the same thing. Maybe I should watch this sales video. Maybe I should read the sales letter. Maybe I should opt in. Maybe I should buy this product. He keeps promoting it. It must be good, right? So you want to get your promoters, the people that are promoting for you, to promote more than once. Get them to promote four or five days in a row. And the way to do that is to follow up and stay on top of them. This is why having a JV affiliate manager can really help if you're busy doing everything. So if you're the one that's doing this, then follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, push, 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 sell, sell, sell. Follow up. Hey, Ricky Bobby, you said you would promote (laughs) and you have not yet. Anything I could do to help you sling some traffic at this? Follow up, follow up, sell, 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 follow up, follow up, sell, 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 push, push, push. Reciprocation. I'll promote for you if you can promote for me. I can send you about 2,000 clicks. 
So I'm using some leverage here. If I'm reaching out to someone to promote for me, I can say, hey, can you promote for me? I'll promote back for you, and I'll send you about 2,000 clicks. Then the person is going to say, sure, okay, let's do it. And then what you end up doing is scheduled to reciprocate for them later on. So you're doing a launch right now. You're the one that's reaching out to ask them to promote. And this is an interesting thing that happens. So you're the one that emails somebody. Let's say you email Ricky Bobby to promote for you. And you say, I'll reciprocate for you in return. And I can send you around 2,000 clicks. Well, Ricky Bobby, being the egotistical marketer that he is, is going to say, okay, cool. Can you promote for me here? And then I'll promote for you. No, no, no. I reached out to you, Ricky Bobby. You promote for me first, then I'll promote for you next month or a couple of months from now, right? So some of this, sometimes you got to kind of train these people and they try to pull a fast one on you. But, but what you're trying to do is get them to promote for you now and you promise to promote for them in the future, like a month or two months from now. Now that gives you time to go get all those people to promote for you because you're promising them all that you're going to promote for them in a couple of months. You tell them all that your schedule is booked until like two months from now, and then you'll promote for them. Then you start scheduling them weekly two months from now to promote back for them. If you're going to play the recip game, that gives you time to go get all these people to promote for you first. So let's say you get 10 people to promote for you this week. And all 10 of those people, you promise to promote back to them two months from now. That gives you a buffer time to build up your own list because you got 10 people all promoting for you to then turn around and give them those 2,000 clicks or whatever. So this is risky because it's putting your back against the wall because what happens if you end up not being able to send those 2,000 clicks? For whatever reason, you can do paid traffic. Shh. But, I mean, whatever happens at that point, um, you know, it's risky. It's putting your back against the wall. But you know what? That's a leap of faith. And I know some people that have done this and have succeeded greatly because they did it on me. They're like, hey, Eric, can you promote? And I'll promote We're back for you. I can send you around two or 3,000 clicks. And I'm like, hell yeah, let's do that. And they're like, okay, well, this is what I need you to promote. And I need to put you on my schedule. How does, you know, you know, two months from now on the 15th sound for you? I'll put you down on that week and promote you all week. Oh, okay. I scratched my head. Oh, so he's going to reset two months from now, but I got to promote him. Okay, cool. I'll bank that, you know, or I come back with some kind of excuse. Well, you know, enough people have done that to me for me to realize what they're doing, what the game is. Then I figured out, oh, okay, well, they don't have 2,000 clicks to send to me now, but they will later on. So, okay, I see what they're doing. Final steps. Just sling it out there, okay? Keep hitting people. Keep asking them to promote for you. Keep following up. Keep following up. Push, push, push. Sell, sell, sell. Follow up, follow up, follow up. Push, push, push. Sell, sell, sell. Follow up, follow up. Keep adding leverage. Keep adding more leverage, more leverage, more leverage. Keep following up over and over again. And this will turn into a huge income. And you can bankroll all the paid traffic you ever want. So stay on top of it, and it will start to snowball for you. I've seen plenty of newbies, I'm telling you, plenty of people step out into the JV world and quickly become huge successes. You could do that too. Just dive in. Just dive, and the net will appear. Thank you so much. This is Eric. I will see you on the next video. Good stuff, huh? 